So what you can do here is you can simply add your notes over here like what was the intuition behind your solution, what was the approach you have taken and what was the time complexity and the space complexity. And this becomes helpful when, when you are preparing for some interviews, right? Because during interviews, you, you will not be able to um, write all the problem codes which you have done in the past, right? Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Hi, I'm Sunny and I'm a software engineer. So in this video today, we'll see how we can run our first program on lead code. So for those who are new to lead code, let me tell you that lead code is a coding platform where you can practice your coding skills. So today in this video, we'll see how we can write our first program on lead code. This video is going to be for the beginners who wonder how to get started with lead code. So in this video, I'll show you how you can run your first program on lead code. And for those who are intermediate or advanced level can watch my another video on this lead code coding platform where I have explained how you can use lead code effectively. You can watch that video from the i button or from the link in the description. So without any further ado, let's start with this video. So here you can see that I am on the lead code platform. You simply need to type leadcode.com and you will land up to this home page. So here you will see you have multiple options. All you need to do is you need to go to this problems tab. You just click on this. You will see a list of programs. So here if you see there is a list of program which is coming up, right? So the first thing you have to do is you have to just click on one of the program which you want to solve and it will open up a editor but before that let me tell you that as you are a beginner try to go for the easy one so here if you see there is a difficulty tab where you can see the difficulty level of a program so if you click on this you will be able to sort the problems according to the difficulty level so i have sorted this in a easy to uh, difficult level so let me just open one of this so let me open this problem to sum. So here you can see the name of the coding problem is to sum and here you can see uh, it has the acceptance percentage of 49.2% and then the difficulty level is easy. So let me just click on this. So once you click on this, you will see this kind of interface where on the left side, here you will see the problem statement under the title. So here you can simply go through the problem statement, you will read through it, you will understand and then also they have provided a few examples with which you should be able to understand what is the type of input what is the output they're expecting and then they have some explanation about how you're getting this output so you can simply go through them example one two and three and to understand the problem better before you can start writing code okay if you scroll down you will see apart from the examples you will also have some constraint right so these are the constraint uh, which is basically you have to consider while coding your solution because this is something which you have to adhere while writing your solution so this is all about the content of the left side of the page now let's move to the right side so here on the right side you can see that there is a inbuilt editor given and here if you see here you will get a list of languages which you can choose so let's say you pro you code in c language so you can simply select the c language where you will get bare minimum method signature inside which you just have to provide the solution right so you don't need to change any of this uh, signature whether, whether the return type of the method or the name or the parameters you just have to adhere to this signature and then you have to write your solution accordingly okay so this is about selecting one of the languages you are comfortable writing code into so this is the solution which i have written earlier so let me just reset this so here on this button if you click you, it will simply reset the code so it will bring up to the earlier uh, structure of the class okay so here if you see in the java you just get the method signature inside which you have to write your code so here uh, i'll be showing it in java language but for you you can choose uh, one of the languages which you are comfortable with and then you can start coding for everything you will get the similar kind of interface where you will have the class and then the uh, uh, method signature already given and inside which you have to write the code so let me first show you like under Java, I'll just write the solution for you. So here, if you see, uh, uh, so this problem, let me tell you a brief about this problem. This problem is a easy problem, which basically states that uh, uh, you have to provide the indices of the number, which sums up to the target value. So let's say you are given this array. Uh, it can have any number of elements uh, depending upon the constraints, but the target value they will be providing, right? So it for this 
input value the target value is 9 so you just have to return the indices which sums up to this target value so for this array if you sum 2 and 7 you will get 9 right so the indices for this would be 0 and 1 right so here if you see the answer is 0 1 similarly in the uh, second example if you see the target value is 6 so here we know if we sum up the 2 and 4 we will get 6 right so the indices for 2 and 4 are 1 and 2 so here they have also mentioned that you can return this indices in any order so order will not matter and also they have said that it this problem has only one solution you will get only one combination which will sum up to this target and it has also mentioned that it will always have one solution so here if you read it is saying you may assume that each input would have exactly one solution and you may not use the same element twice okay so this is the constraint so now we have a basic understanding of this problem so i'll quickly write the solution for you and we'll show you how to execute it with different test cases okay so here you can see that uh, uh, this method is returning a type of integer array which means uh, we will be returning the indices in the form of array and also it is accepting two things one is the integer array and another one is the target value so now what i can do i can write a simple naive solution where i will simply iterate through this array i'll take two numbers at a time i'll sum them and we'll see if the value is equal to the target if if it matches the condition then i'll simply store that particular indices and will return it so let me just write a for loop nested for loop So here I have written a nested loop inside which I am just checking if the nums i and nums j are summing up to target then I will be just returning this otherwise at the end I will be returning null if there is no such solution. So in that in our case as the problem states that there will be one solution so we will never uh, reach this point. So let's run this and see the output. So here if you see at the below we have a few of the test cases already given so it will run against them so let me first run and then explain you so you have to just click run and then you will wait for some time so here i have got some error so i have uh, a typo here so i'll just i'll run it again so here you will simply get any error any syntactical error or typo if you have made okay uh, there is one more error here for length you don't have to give braces so if i run this program this should run now so here when you get accepted that means the output which you are getting from this code is matching the expected output so here if you see this was the input this was the target value and then the output of your program is this and the expected is this in case you get uh, an uh, wrong answer i'll show you what it looks like so let me just modify this program i have added just a logical error so that i can show you how it looks uh, in case of a wrong answer so in case of a wrong answer you can simply see it it gives you a wrong answer uh, uh, where you can see that the output you are getting is this but the expected is this and it also uh, shows the diff right similarly on the other test cases you can go to the case 2 you can again compare the expected uh, output okay so i will just revert this let me run this again so now i hope you have understood how easily you can run your program let me tell you one more thing you can also uh, add your custom test cases so let's say you have written the logic but you want to uh, uh, test your code uh, with some more test cases right so how we, how can you do that you can simply do that by going to the test cases and here what you can do you can modify this right so let's say i modify the target value to let's say 12 or let's say 13 right so for this input uh, we should get 13 by adding 2 and 11 that means your output should be 0 and 2 right so let's run this program so you will be able to see the expected output so here as you can see it shows the output is this and also the expected one is this so this way you will be able to test all your edge cases whatever the test case uh, coming to your mind you, you can test via the custom test case and yeah this way you can run your program you can test your program accordingly okay so once you have tested your code with uh, custom test cases and also with the given test cases we are good to submit this code right so we we were just running this code uh, to to verify the logic now the final thing would be to submit this code 
so when you submit any code what it does it basically checks your code against more test cases right you may have uh, uh, missed the edge case you may have missed this constraint right this kind of things will be tested when you submit the code so let me submit and show you here you can see that it says uh, the program has been accepted it basically gives you a detailed info about your program so the runtime was 89 millisecond and then the memory took by your program was this it also gives other details like how good or bad your code is with compared to other submitted code right so once you submit the code when you see the code has been accepted then you're good to move to the next problem so here on the top you can see uh, you have a uh, arrow given so once you click on this arrow you will be shown a different problem or you can also go to the problems tab and then select the problem according to uh, uh, what you like uh, like you can select different topics and based upon that you can choose your problem and solve it but before that let me tell you one more thing so once you are done with this problem here here we have a button called solution right when you click on this it gives you a ui where you can simply write your intuition approach complexity space complexity and everything right so what happens generally when we solve any pro problem we have some understanding about the problem right we have some intuition and we know how to solve it right so what you can do here is you can simply add your notes over here like what was the intuition behind your solution what was the approach you have taken and what was the time complexity and the space complexity so this kind of uh, you are making a note in the lead code itself so that tomorrow when you come back and when you just try to go through this problem you don't have to solve it again and you can just like uh, go through these notes and just revise your concepts right right and this becomes helpful when when you are preparing for some interviews right because during interviews you you will not be able to um, write all the problem codes which you have done in the past right so the best way would be to just solve the problem write your notes and then keep it ready on the lead code so in later point of time when you come back and just revise go through these notes you will be able to understand the problem and in case you if you feel that uh, something is uh, not understandable or something you have forgotten what you can do you can always uh, write this program again to to have more clarity right so those kind of things you can do so this is one of the very good feature which uh, lead code has recently added so you can took advantage of this i would highly recommend to do this way this will take some of your time like to uh, make this note but this will definitely reduce a lot of time while interview preparations so use it so let's go back to the original window so here uh, we have other other uh, stuffs on the top so let me again go back to the description so so here on the editor you can see there is a auto button when once you click on this so this is basically available on the premium account but i would not recommend this because uh, what this will give you is the auto suggestion for your uh, programs right but for the beginners i would not suggest to go for the auto uh, suggestion thing because uh, if, uh, at the beginning what you will require is you will require to write a lot of code right then only you'll be able to uh, remember some of the methods which are frequently used right uh, because like in the interviews what used to happen is most of the interviews you will find that interviewers will ask you to write code on a doc like it could be google doc or some other kind of doc but you have to write it there like there will be no editor given to you right so you have to practice that way so for the beginners i would highly recommend you to not uh, go for this uh, feature and also you don't need to buy lit code premium at the beginning okay and there are another uh, few things where uh, which you can uh, configure here is you can go to the settings and then you can configure the uh, font size key binding tab size these are small things you can explore and understand but the main thing about this video was to make you understand how you can run a code on lead code by understanding the problem statement how you can use the editor things like that so i hope this video will help you to uh, write your first lead code program so if you have learned something from this video i would urge you to like this video and share this video with your friend and if you are new to this channel please consider subscribing to my channel for more such videos thank you for watching